right, you bastards. Are you going to cry for the moon and go shock? Because we are. It is that time again. Generation X-Men. And uh, because YouTube does not like this channel because they are, well, they're YouTube. They suck ass. Uh, yeah, go to your social media and let everyone know we are live. I am your host, Jay Ishiro Finney, author and alien in a human suit, and the author of many great graphic novels and the best pop culture book you'll ever read, Boobs of Steel, the Amazonian archetype throughout history and pop culture. With me is... Mm. Sorry, I was taking a drink. I'm Janelle. <laughs> um, I make alcohol for fun. Uh, I think the Chris Claremont era of X-Men is the only good era, and everything else is shit with a few exceptions. And hi, and I'm Kronk over here. Hey. I was about to introduce you, Kronk, just to fuck with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know something about Marvel, and I wrote a thing. You guys are welcome okay. to read it anytime. Please do. Yes, if you ever want to check out... Kronk stuff. Um, okay, I you guys are going to the... what? Just excuse me for a minute. There, there's already oh. been a casualty with the sliding glass door and children. <laughs> I'll be right back. <laughs> All right then. Well, terrible place for a casualty. As uh, the brewer goes out to check on her kid. Um, now I know that this week we were supposed to do the uh. follow-up or part two of um, all about Psylocke, but. You know, this has been a busy week. I didn't get the time to do the research, and I want to do that show right. So we're going to put it off for a week. Uh, what's probably going to happen is we're probably just going to, you know, light the fuse that is Janelle and have her go <laughs> off on something. Well, before we start, um, I do want to issue a retraction about last week's episode saying where Psylocke got her armor from. I was absolutely positive it came from Roma. It did not come from Roba. It actually came from the tailor named Chang who worked in Madripoor. And it is a combination of mystical arm, uh, mystical metal and something else that makes it pretty much indestructible. And uh, to go into a little bit about it before we light a fuse, because oh, I've got some, I, I got a few fuses we can go off on. Uh -huh. Um it was they during the uh, Marvel Comics Presents Wolverine maxi series. Uh, he had built it, had it built for Psylocke, but because Tiger Tiger was fighting General Koi, who is the uncle of Karma, uh, they put it on Tiger Tiger to protect her from, I think it's Blood Scream and Rough House, who were oh, the two yeah. mutant enforcers of uh, General Koi. And then Lindsay wears it. Lindsay McCabe, who is the uh, business partner of Jessica Drew, they were they were also part of um, Marvel Comics Presents. Because everybody forgets that Jessica Drew was an integral part of the X Men in the seventies and the eighties. And actually, you know, I I do have something we can talk about today. That'll be fun. We'll get to that. Um, Lindsay McCabe wore it before it finally ended up in the hands of Psylocke. So there is my retraction. I apologize, everyone. I actually got that one wrong. So everybody, the lesson is Psylocke wears everybody else's hand-me-downs. <laughs> <laughs> Including Captain Britain's outfit, unfortunately. Yeah, she recycles everybody's hand-me-downs. Oh, okay, so now I'm going to light a fuse about Psylocke. So oh, yeah. everybody knows the Krakoa arc has been like the most horrible thing to happen apparently they can't even sell the trade paperbacks that's how bad it is guys i was so happy to hear that nobody talks about the krakoa arc and as much as we you know we all hate today's x-men comics i really do want to do a dive into krakoa to um show how they have massacred these characters so we all know that um was it 2018 no it's 2020 um Psylocke, a British woman being in an Asian body, was problematic, right? I don't so, see. So, wait, wait. I don't see why. I mean, there have been so many fucking body swap issues. Cultural uh, appropriation. It's, it's a white woman that was inhabiting the body of a person of color. But she... that isn't even true either. That well, yeah, I know, not... because the stupid-ass retcon that her body wasn't remolded. Oh, no, she just had a mind swap, which is the stupidest no. shit ever. They flat-out changed her goddamn DNA via alchemy. Yeah, it was... Okay? Uh, it was very clear. Yeah, it was alchemy and science. They, it was very, very clear 
that they had actually changed her on a genetic level. So, no, bull fucking shit. And also at the uh, racial draft picks, uh, the Asians were chosen by the white people to join the team. So she's white anyway. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I mean, this this is going to really piss a As lot of people off. As an honorary Aryan, I can say I don't give a shit. <laughs> Hey, you're you, honorary. And you are drunk. half Japanese, so I mean, exactly. hey, you're technically, you know, you're kind of like Psylocke. You're half white. You're half Japanese. You know. Hey, yeah, I made you Irish. honorary ginger too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, black Irish, actually, but anyway. <laughs> so they they put Psylocke back into her regular body, um, and the Asian body disappeared. Well, because you know people are stupid and don't read shit and don't understand the history. Um, apparently Psylocke got her original body back and so Quanon got her original body back. So Marvel thought it'd be really awesome if they retired Brian from Captain Britain and made Betsy Captain Britain. And then Quanon could just stay Psylocke with the same power set, the same name, uh, everything. So basically they got rid of Betsy who, you know, is Psylocke and put Quanon in. So now we fast forward the Krakoa era. I guess it's over. <coughs> hey, the new comics you know, are you know, coming out. You know, the thing is, and I make a point of this, is that there's always this stereotype. There's always the stereotype that the ethnic uh, pride groups are always bitching about. And what do they bitch? Oh, you're always scared that we're going to come take your jobs. And then what, what do they do? Take your jobs. They, they Yeah, well, they basically replace the X-Men with... Well, okay, it, it, it gets it gets better. So the new X Men comic books are coming out. The solicitations came out. I saw them on the subreddits, and there's Quanon as Psylocke. They didn't even bring Betsy back to the original team. No, they brought in Quanon, so they decided to keep the body. And it's not even Quanon's power set. That is Betsy's power set. But now Quanon has the same friggin' power set. I don't even know Quanon's power set. Originally, Quanon just had low-level telepathy that showed up as like a clairvoyance that she used when she was assassinated. She didn't even have Betsy's powers. No. no. So, I mean, and the stupid retcon, instead of, you know, having the body permanently changed, I mean, that was one thing Xavier talked about later on was... Hey, she's got deep-seated psychological issues that we're going to have to keep an eye on because her body has been, oh, I don't know, completely transformed into a brand new body that is nothing like the old body. Betsy's original body, she was like 5'6". When Mojo and Spiral got a hold of her, not only did they turn her Japanese, they made her 5'11". She was an Amazon. Yeah. So oh, no, She was always 5'11". Well, I thought Betsy was 5'6". No, she was more slender for sure, less muscular, but she was 5'11". Her, oh, okay. her and Beast and Storm are all 5'11". Okay. I swear to God, I thought she was 5'6". I think um, uh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Actually. What matters is Marvel has decided that the body and the ethnicity of the body is more important than the actual character. They left Betsy to stay on Excalibur yeah. or do her own Captain Britain adventures, which that's bullshit. She should be on the main X-Men team. Instead, this character that nobody has any connection with, but apparently they all made connections with the wrong Krakoa, is now part of the main X-Men team. What the hell, guys? Really? Her, well, really, her really, really what it comes down to... Is? What it comes down to is leftists are the most racist pieces of shit on earth. It's that simple. That, and I equate it with, like, your, no offense, ladies, but when your sister would play with your action figures and He-Man and Bar Barbie are getting married now and they're going to settle down in the dream house and He-Man's going to be, you know, going to work on Battle Cat every day and he's not fighting Skeletor, Skeletor anymore. He sells cars or something stupid. They don't know the history. They don't care about the history. They don't care about the lore. They're going to do whatever the hell they want to do with it. They're like, look at shiny colors, everyone. Buy our dog shit. 
Yep. And Betty Smith also makes, yes, we did talk about how Betsy's a lesbian. Betsy is in a lesbian yeah. ra relationship with Rachel Summers. Of course she is. Well, does anybody remember when Betsy, under the influence of Quanon, was trying to get, oh, I don't know, Rachel's dad to sleep with her? Yeah. So that means that Rachel is pretty much hitting her dad's sloppy seconds? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No. That's not gross at all. That's fine. They're the most debaucherous, degenerate, racist pack of, packs of assholes you'll ever meet. Oh, That's is simple. She, you know what we're going to do, Krakoa, right now? There's a lot we can do on Krakoa. You guys want to get pissed? Let's get pissed. I got Let's... another one for you. <laughs> we're going on the Nightcrawler now. Hmm? I absolutely despise the character Nightcrawler at this point. Not old school Nightcrawler. Not our yep. beloved fuzzy elf, Kurt. The Current silver tongue devil. Yes, the, the swashbuckling hero who yeah. his idol was Errol Flynn. That's yeah. my Nightcrawler. Kids nowadays would be like, what's an Errol Flynn? Yeah, I know. Nobody, does... nobody knows the classics. Do you buy that on Amazon? They don't know some person. So, Same. Kurt, as part of the Quiet Council, uh, Mystique, his mom was mocking him for his beliefs in Catholicism. And, you know, they asked, well, what should be one of the core tenets of Krakoa? Make babies. Now, let me finish before everybody goes off. Unprotected sex. They actually opened up under a mutant named Stacy X, who is this weird mutant that looks like a snake and gives off pheromones and was a prostitute. <laughs> yeah. I think okay. you were telling me about that one. Yeah. So what happens is all the mutants on the island are having unprotected uh What's the word? I'm not just debaucherous, but like Rando. open relationships. They're just banging everywhere. So they open this brothel so they have a safe place to bang. Um, and then That's they have their kids and they abandon them at the brothel. All of a sudden, there is a problem where kids are being, you know, where babies are being made and then abandoned because the mutants don't want to raise them. They're too busy fucking and partying and having a, we have a good time. Why do we have to be parents? So not only is this brothel open oh, where people can ha come have sex uh, at uh, either, you know, they, they prefer no um, contraceptives because they want to populate because that's where Kurt's idea is like, oh, yeah, you know, hey, Catholicism, we're not supposed to use prophylactics. So people are just fucking each other, having kids and then abandoning them. And he's basically saying, not my problem. Meanwhile, Stacy X, who is running this brothel, is also now running an orphanage in the brothel. And Kurt does not care. It's more important that they procreate and these kids just don't have parents than to actually have a nuclear family. Kurt's That's dead. what they did to Kurt. Kurt, Kurt fucking sucks. Yeah, he's dead. He, he didn't come back. Yeah. And so, like, you've got this orphanage that's in this brothel. So you've got people having sex with abandoned infants next door. Yeah. What do you that's, need a that's, brothel that... for if everybody's having an open relationship? Just go next, go next door, knock, ask for a cup of sugar, come on in and help yourself. I mean, what do you need in a brothel for? I am so glad that at least two characters got saved from this, and that was Gambit and Rogue, because Rogue can't have children because she'd most likely kill the fetus in the womb. So they didn't engage in that shit. But yeah, I mean, um, Krakoa was the epitome of, you know, uh, Lord Byron's free love movement. Him and Percy Shelley, when they were like, oh, yeah, let's go screw everyone. You know, and later on, the, the peace, you know, make love, not war hippie movement. That's gross. And that was totally okay. Totally what? okay. They had Nightcrawler backing it up because he was a Catholic and they don't believe in uh, uh, birth control. Thank you. Oh my God. Sorry. I'm so mad. I can't even think of the damn word. But here's the thing. You, you, you guys know that Cyclops and Havoc, they're completely immune to each other's mutant powers. In fact, they make each other stronger if they blast each other, right? Yeah. They just feed each other. Same for Cyclops and Cable, per se. Or Cyclops and Nate Gray or Phoenix. Although you can't be invulnerable to telekinesis for the most part. But um, if you're related, you know, you're a mutant. You're basically invulnerable to the other person's power. Well, you know, I'm going to just kind of throw in here. Obviously if there's not. any question about how fucked up this all is and the intentions and the kind of people doing this. Mm -hmm. Stacey X was created by the same guy who created America Chavez. So 
Oh, Chuck Austin. Was it Chuck uh, Austin that created Joe, her? Joe Casey. Oh, okay. Don't know him. No. But he made America Chavez. That's that's enough reason to hate him. Yeah. But what I was gonna say is, Rogue's baby should be immune to her power if she was if she ever did get pregnant. Her her reasoning was actually pretty solid. She didn't want to risk it. She didn't want to risk like imagine if you think that her baby should be immune and then all yeah. of a sudden it's not. That made sense. That's understandable. So I just I kind of thought it was funny that the the ladies man of the team Gambit married the chick that he can't touch and okay, can't so do any of the baby making. Well, I think she I can refuse. control it now from what I read. Sorry. Go ahead. I refuse. I refuse to waste brain cells by <laughs> letting any of this shit into my mind. So I'm just going to ask you, is this kind of like, are we, is it being portrayed as the, uh, you know, there was the fall of the mutants. Is this the uh, decline of the mutant empire? Is this like the last days of Rome for them? Is this how it's being portrayed? I guess so. I, it was such a clusterfuck and people in chat, you can, uh, fill in because I didn't read Krakoa. Is this supposed all the to be? Uh, is this supposed to be Weimar Krakoa? It was. I think. I honestly think Jonathan Hickman was trying to make the X Men the new bad guys of um, Oh Undead Quinn. God. Yeah. Uh, by the way, Gail Simone is the new head writer of X Men. Yep. Yeah. Well, you know what? I expect a lot of food then, because yeah. as we know, there is oh, yeah. Simone's law. Which is she cannot go five pages without mentioning food. And Tom King can't either. Either like misery or food. Yeah. I, I lost my train of thought because I saw what Undead Quinn said and just like Gil Simone popped into my head and I just wanted to cry. Um, no, I, uh, so I'll ask again. Is this so supposed to be Weimar uh, Krakoa? Is this the fall of the mutants or is this I, I being portrayed so. as they're the good guys? I think they're, so. they're still well, the good I, guys. How? Well, I think Hickman actually exactly. was going to make them the bad guys, but then oh. other people came in and were like, oh, yeah, this totally lines up with all our beliefs. These guys are the ultimate good guys. The X-Men were the villains during the Krakoa arc, and people that were writing it thought it was cool. Like, no, that's how it should be. I ever, From what I gather, most except the same fucking people who hate the Krakoa arc still think Emma Frost is the boss bitch and like the greatest X-Men character. They even released a poll recently said, who is the best woman for Scott? And it got like 75% Emma Frost. And I wanted to punch my computer screen. You people don't know shit. She is a horrible person. Fucking stop worshiping somebody yeah. that hijacked Storm's body and let Sebastian... Uh, what's his name? Uh, Sebastian Shaw, take it for a test drive. Shut up about Emma Frost. She is a horrible person. The fact that you think she is awesome says so says just everything about you. She is terrible. Mm -hmm. Stop it. She is also based on Grant Morrison's mistress. And I don't care what anybody says. When Grant Morrison decided to make Jean a cold, heartless god? Cool. You know what? We all like that because she was already the phoenix before. She deserves to be a god. All right? She deserves to be the phoenix. It backfired, homie, a and lot. If y'all want a cold, telepathic anti-hero, that's why they invented Psylocke. You don't need fucking ice bitch. Well, you know, you know, doing that to Jean is nostalgic because it's really tired when it's been done before. <laughs> it's but been done to death people hate the character Jean Grey now they think she's an absolute snob and a bitch and a lot of people hate her because of Bendis when they brought back the team from the past when it was the teenagers and teenage Jean outed Bobby they all hate her for that it's like dude seriously that was so out of character for Jean she would have pulled him aside and been like, hey, you know, I'm still learning how to use my telepathy. And unfortunately, like, I can't block out your thoughts. And when you're ready to come out, even though I'm not down with him coming out because he's not gay. That yeah. that was Bendis's thing. Yeah. But there was Bendis. a better Bendis way to do it. Bendis is a debaucherous sicko. Bendis is gay. You think so? Not in the homosexual way. I mean, the, oh, the, the okay. 80s lame way. 
I, I was thinking he was kind of more along the lines of a, um, you know, Jeffrey Epstein type, really, in his preferences. Uh, that kind of aligns with the past to some extent. So, but anyway. Yeah. yeah, no, they they have gotten what they wanted since Grant Morrison hated the character because apparently the character reminded him of his wife and they have just made Gene horrible since then. And, you know, people who are old schoolers that read are like, that it's not Gene. Gene is totally out of character. That is somebody else. Honestly, it's like demons are inhabiting all their bodies. They got possessed by shit from Limbo. They, well, they are not the X-Men that we remember. Well, it was Kitty Pride's decision to bring the X Mansion to Limbo when they were getting attacked too much at the mansion. So, possibly. Well, it's because they were all going to die because yeah. they were trying to replace the X Men with the Inhumans. Yeah. Because the X Men was still tied up with Fox. So, that's the other thing, too, is they all worship Ileana. She's the other boss bitch that everybody Oh, likes. I know. Ileana, is, while she's a cool character, is heavily damaged and really friggin' evil. She, okay. She, she could be a good character. She she was a good character, like as in like her intentions. I, I told you that like she had a class where two students were late and she she left them in limbo for two minutes, which is like what two hours? Yeah, or, no, no, not well, even that. That's like two months. Yeah, it could be two weeks. Could two months? Could be, <laughs> yeah. And they, how do you think they did in limbo by themselves? She's the <laughs> one that brought when. Um... How long do you think before they're drinking piss? Because there's no water. She's the one who brought a bunch of the newer ex students that came from the Morrison era into limbo and started taking out chunks of Pixie's soul so she could rebuild her own soul sword and then come back as Dark Child into the real world to do her invasion. Yeah, that's that's Ileana, guys. Like, she's not somebody to worship. I can't stand that character now no. either. It, she's awful. You and know, then here's uh, people that the X Men would fight. Not X Men, dude. I could see the Ileana now meeting yeah. the Colossus of the past. Colossus would mercy kill her. So would Logan. Well, I hate how Doctor Strange is totally enamored with her. He's like, "Oh, you're the next great, greatest, best thing, dude." She's a demon or becoming one. She's not yeah, that cool. You want her to be the next Sorceress Supreme? Are you out of your damn mind? No. And here's another thing, too, because the way they turned Beast into a horrifying, like, true Nazi war criminal, he was, uh, let's say he was based on Goebbels at this point. I could be wrong. I, I might be getting Whose mixed decision up. was that? Uh, I don't know. Is that but very recent? He's the one that when Colossus pissed him off and broke some rule in Krakoa, he made Colossus pray, parade through the street while they were basically pulling a Game of Thrones, doing a shame, shame on him. Beast did that to Colossus. Now, Beast is going around killing people, being an awful human being. What? They they brought back, yeah, because this backfired. Like, apparently the Krakoa fans had their limit, too, and that was turning Beast into Dark Beast. So they were basically saying that Hank was always evil. That This is not a joke. And that's why alternate versions of him always go evil because he was always had the evil inside him. Just Xavier and the others kept it at bay. But once Krakoa happened, he had free reign to be the evil man he's always been. So that's bullshit. We all know that because well, we all read X-Men. Oh, I'm not done yet. Hold on. Oh, then I'll go, let go, you go, Kronk, because I want you to go. This is your boy that they're destroying. What have they done to your boy? You know what I mean? They brought back they cloned back Avengers, Avengers era beast to go stop 616 beast. And instead, he's a crying mess wanting to know why he became so evil. Bad writing? If I'm yeah. being honest, I'm having tears popping out of my eyes right now. And it's not because I'm laughing too hard. No, you're pissed, right? Yeah. No, they massacred your boy. I'm not happy. I was so angry. Beast you guys is... can hear my voice is shaking. I'm so pissed. You Beast don't is... mess with certain characters. Beast is a paladin. He couldn't have got on the Avengers if he wasn't. No. <laughs> He's a power mad paladin, apparently. I just... <laughs> no, he he shows up recently <clears throat> in uh Power Man's apartment begging him for help, crying because the like his uh, present self is so evil he has to stop him 
And then Power Man is somehow a pacifist now. I haven't what? read Avengers, but he's a pacifist now. Oh, do you mean Wonder Man or Power Man? Wonder, um, Wonder Man, I'm sorry. He's yeah, he's a, a Buddhist man. and all sorts of stupid crap. It's dumb. Yeah, remember when he was the awesome superhero that also made movies about himself and they were yeah. great? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's the he Wonder was Man Johnny I remember. Cage. He was essentially yeah. Johnny Cage. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I mean, the Krakoa era, you took the worst of the worst when it came to writers. These are the writers that have messed up everything, and you allowed them to play in the X-Men sandbox. And instead of using it as an X-Men sandbox, they used it as a litter box and then have the, the kindness to clean out their own turds. Yeah. Pretty so much. that yeah. is that's the state of X-Men. Uh, I guess Iceman's still going to be a gay god in Antarctica, and Jean is now uh, the phoenix again as a god. I, I honestly wish that somebody at Marvel would have the balls and just wipe them all out. Kill all the X-Men off. That's it. I'd rather the writers get killed off, but th this is me. <laughs> not saying do it. I'm not saying I'd do it. I'm just saying it, would be, it wouldn't be a bad thing. I'm going to use I'm going to use up and waste the brain cell real quick. Avengers era beast could not take current era beast, but not for lack of trying or courage. Because current era beast is twice as strong, and if he's evil, he doesn't have the same compunctions as Avengers era beast. It's just he would need like Wonder Man to come to his aid. The what they've done to Hank McCoy is probably the most egregious of all changes to all the x-men i mean it's um these people wanted their fan fiction instead you can tell which characters they hated you really can because those are the characters that had the most radical changes yeah but you can also tell that those they also, nightcrawler yeah i mean the Nightcraw Nightcrawler asking for people to just sleep with each other and have kids and have no problem with those babies being abandoned. Kurt would not be for that. He'd be like, we need to encourage the nuclear family. We need to yeah. encourage it takes a village. Well, he's going to change his code name to Night Boomer. Is he really? No, but like, it would oh, make more I sense. Like, oh my God. It would make well, more sense. Like, they're just all, you know, do it in the road and free love and all that hippie bullshit. Well, they also, when they brought back Destiny, instead of her being an old man, she's young and beautiful, and now her and Mystique hate each other, and Mystique's trying to kill her. Oh, because, that's certainly innovative. Because yeah. of course. Yeah, I mean, just Look, in all... I, I, also... I, just, I just think what it comes down to, and we say this every episode at some point, or I do, is that the fact is, these people have very, very dark souls. They are very ugly people inside mm -hmm. and they need to destroy the heroes because they can't possibly believe anyone else is not like them they have to believe everyone is just as bad as they are well because if they don't believe that then they'd have to change right they can't have that they don't have the courage to do that <laughs> or the will yeah and I, I think that's one of the reasons they keep destroying all the heroes is that Oh, well, if we have these people, these stories of heroic people who overcome this, these things, you know, the, the X-Men have had uh, times when they've gone dark. There's been several times yeah. the X-Men have gone dark. Yeah. Uh, and them clawing their way back out of it. The fact that they do it, that is the drama. That is the crucible. That is the story that makes them so damn interesting. When they have no other, when they have every reason to just say, fuck the world, they all hate us, let's just become Nazis. They don't. Why? Because they're heroes. But they're now heroic. They are. Yeah. With Kitty Pride being the leader of the Marauders. Right. As if that would have, yeah, seriously. Uh, not just the leader of the Marauders, but they're pirates. Yeah. And yeah. here's a good one, too. Um, I, I'm sure you guys can remember. Uh, there was a big outcry when I can't remember who it was that was writing Black Panther, 
But Wakanda had come up with either it was the cure for cancer or AIDS. It was was it Tana, Tana uh, Heathy uh, Coates or Oh, the racist, else? the guy that said that uh, white people dying in 9/11 were just objects. Was it Tana Coates that did that? I don't know. I was just throwing. I that thought out there. maybe it was the guy that came from BET, Reginald something. The one that out of the blue said that Storm and Black Panther have been in love this whole time. They have to get married right now. Yeah, that was so contrived. Yeah, that was when Claremont had come back and was writing uh, X-Men, and he was building up to Storm. Either there was a love triangle going on between Nightcrawler, Storm, and Wolverine, which I thought was a little weird, but whatever. Um, Wolverine, Storm is okay? Wolverine, Storm, Nightcrawler? No. Sorry. Yeah, I thought it was really weird that like all of a sudden Storm's got the hots for Nightcrawler and Logan. You could just bring back, you know, Forge. Thank you, her soulmate, that you, Claremont, yourself had established. Why did you change it, bro? I don't know. Moving on. <sighs> uh, and I lost track of my thought because, fuck, I'm mad. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, 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 no. I just uh, had to in interject because, I mean, if you remember that book with the X-Men, Captain Britain, Megan, and versus Horde, I think right towards the end of it, I think it was that one where Storm and Wolverine started making out when it was like the end of the world. They thought they were both going to die. Or was that a different? Was that Fall of the Mutants? No, it wasn't Fall of the Mutants because it she seems was like they're Horde. always jumping into each other's arms right at the last minute. They're like, well, uh, one last smooch before we all die. So it kind of um, makes sense to me. Yeah. Well, the thing was, the way that they were written under Claremont was that Storm and uh, Wolverine had a mutual respect and understanding. Yeah, huge respect. And there was, it was very clear that they understood each other on a level the rest of the team didn't. And even though they disagreed horribly at times, down to even coming to blows, yeah. there was that understanding. They were like, like two warriors. I honestly think if Claremont wanted to get a little debaucherous, he was going to give Logan and Aurora a friends with benefits relationship. I truly well, see, do. See, I could buy that, though. I mean, yeah. Yeah. when you're in the foxhole, and, and shit plus like that happens. Neither's in a relationship. Yeah. Why not? That would have been fine. Oh. I would have I been fine with that. Uh, Dominic Powell says it was Ta Nisi Coates that did that. So I remember now. Uh, okay. Are we shocked? Are we shocked no. that ultra racist... Black yeah. Hitler did it? Oh, what a shock. So that was really a controversial storyline. People actually went after him for that, like saying that had gone too far, that Wakanda decided that the rest of the colonizers didn't deserve this cure. <laughs> well, then the X-Men yeah. do it. They, they come up with a metal that's more indestructible than uh, adamantium, and they refuse. They, they give it out, but they won't tell anybody how to make it. And they, they like parse it out. Um, uh huh. I want to point out some real severe flaws with uh, Wakanda and the col uh, colonizers line that has been used over and over and over again. Yeah. Um, at no point in Wakanda's history were they colonized. They, Who the they fuck colonized. are they talking about? They colonized. Exactly. Yeah. Who the fuck are they talking about? Oh, well, they're, they they're were feeling, never colonized. They were never enslaved. Their... What are they bitching about? They're feeling for their brothers and sisters who they didn't bring out of squalor in the third world. Yeah, the ones that they That's, ignored. That is something yeah. I hated about. Okay, I actually liked parts of the Black Panther movie, and then there yeah. were parts that I absolutely despised. Like they were talking about white people being colonizers, yet they would not share their tech with the countries around them to the point yeah. that uh, the love interest in the movie. Uh, for uh, T'Challa had left Wakanda and was rescuing women who were being kidnapped and trafficked in yeah. sex slavery. Yeah. And well, he you know, only went to help her when she was in trouble, not the rest of the women that, you know, had been kidnapped to be forced into prostitution, but her. Some here. And it was absolutely stupid. I was like, oh my God, you're actually making T'Challa and Wakanda look awful what a horrible country and its people are horrible yeah, you yeah. are totally okay with you saw the supposed colonizers still ruling the countries around them and instead of helping them you let them stay you let apartheid happen without an issue you saw all the exploitation you saw the blood diamond mines you you know you saw the yeah. the the tribes going the lithium I, mines 
Yeah, the warlords going to war against each other because of their tribes and chopping off children's arms. You saw Congo Congoing itself. Well, he here, saw here, the here. mass Let's... rapes going on yeah. and didn't do shit. How about this? No. no, no how about this? They are bordered right on Kenya, Ethiopia, and the Democratic Republic of Congo. If they're so upset <laughs> about slavery, why don't they go into those countries and stop the slavery going on? Oh, exactly. it's only bad when Whitey does it, right? Yep. Here, here's the thing. Black Panther could go into the Congo by himself without an army and conquer the whole damn place, make it a peaceful, wonderful place where they traffic and bananas instead of prostitution or whatever i don't care whatever right. they, they can make it a wonderful place by himself without even trying it's kind of and sad when you realize that bill gates is actually more of a generous character than uh, uh t'challa and the un would be perfectly okay with it what they should have done is the original Panther's Rage storyline instead of loosely following that because the Panther, and then I'll get back to X-Men. Yes. But the Panther's Rage storyline is actually very good because Black Panther has had to come back to Wakanda after being gone for such a long time because he needs to rule his country, but his heart is torn in two. He enjoys being with the Avengers. That is a family to him. But mm -hmm. at the same time, he needs to be there for his people. And Eric Killmonger had actually come to the Avengers looking for T'Challa, saying the country needs you, and T'Challa turned him away. So Eric Killmonger said, F you, went back and was like, I'm going to conquer the country for myself. And as this storyline is going on, you know, Black Panther doesn't have the hardcore superhero powers or even the kick-ass suit that he has now. He's just a man with a little bit of juice from um, the heart-shaped herb. And he is tired, exhausted, beaten to shit, does not trust anyone anymore. Even the woman that he brought home who was, uh, I can't remember her name, she was an American soul singer, who the people of Wakanda didn't like because she was American, she was not Wakandan, Which and is didn't very want him realistic. to marry her. And very realistic. They... That's what the, they should have done that, that, you know, he's fighting against somebody who thinks that they are better at being the ruler than he is. But instead, they had to go the colonizer route in the end. Because remember, uh, uh, Killmonger even says at the end, I, you know, I don't want to die on uh, my knees like my ancestors did or some stupid shit like yeah, that. Yeah, hey, 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 uh, put me in the you're, ocean you're... like my, yeah, leave me Killmonger. in the ocean like your your ancestors weren't slaves. <laughs> no, you were never colonized. You weren't on That's your knees. The, yeah, no, I mean it was so stupid. And honestly, in my opinion, even though I enjoyed the Black Panther movie, there was really I just enjoyed Okoye because she's rad. Um, <laughs> they were all villains, in my opinion. They all were. They were all yeah. selfish villains. Except yeah. wait, you know what? Um, Mbaku, who I'm glad they actually didn't do the character. You know, Mbaku in the comics originally was literally a character of a man ape like the the um uh that i can't remember uh, the name uh but yeah they they made him like the character of you know big full lips black face everything instead they made them the tribe that decided to walk away from the technology and actually hold the history of wakanda together i like that Th those guys were cool too because they hadn't been corrupted Man Ape, thank you, Buddy Smith. Yeah, Man it was Man Ape, yeah. Um, um, I'm going to toss in here. You know it's sad when DC, uh, DCU's uh, Ape City yeah. is more believable and makes more sense than Wakanda. Oh, yeah. 100%. I actually like Ape City. Yep. There, that's it. Wolf Wolf has the quote. Wolf has the quote. Okay. Yeah. Um, like my ancestors that fell off the boat because they believed death was better than bondage. Hey, guess what? Your ancestors didn't do fuck. <laughs> yeah, because they were already technologically advanced when that shit was going down. Why weren't they stopping the slave trade? Yeah. Good job, guys. Yeah. So Can, um, can I read from uh, my own personal Bible really quick? This is uh, about the Black Panther and his actual list of powers, which the movie got completely fucked off wrong. This is from the official handbook of the Marvel Universe circa 1986-1989. Black Panther. Known superhuman powers. None. 
Thank you. Thank you. He had to drink the steroid juice and he only wore a spandex outfit. Yep. Abilities. Besides the heightened physical strength the Black Panther possesses, the speed, agility, and endurance of a gifted athlete in great condition. He is particularly accomplished at gymnastics, acrobatics, and brachiation, swinging from one branch to another. The Black Panther's five senses are highly... Hold on, that's hard to read. It's his old book. Highly acute, there we go. Although not superhumanly so. They didn't have him sniff anything, did they, in the whole damn movie? They didn't have no. him see in the dark, did they? He was no. just like his skin tight Iron Man suit. Yeah, his nano suit. Wakanda's national motto is fuck you, I got mine. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's fairly accurate when it comes to Hollywood stars who are black who've made it. Yeah, pull and the by ladder the way, up. Black Panther does fit into this because, you know, he was rammed into the X-Men universe because, you know, Storm. So I didn't go too far off. But Wakanda, okay, so Krakoa is like right Wakanda, back. but for mutants. I mean, it is unbelievable. I just, there's there's no saving it. And I, they've destroyed every character. I mean, Storm all of a sudden goes from being like, yeah, I don't, you know, I was worshipped as a goddess, but I shouldn't be like in that mindset. So yeah, I'm the mm -hmm the the governor of the solar system and i rule erico which was you know the mutants went and invaded and terraformed mars and took it over and told the rest of humanity to shut the fuck up and they wouldn't even let the shiar the kree or the scrolls come in without talking to them first because they were the ones that ruled the solar system not humans they were putting humans in their place also, this whole, like, I hate Charles Xavier shit that's been going on for 20 years, yeah. turning him into Hitler, and he is a horrible human being and a true villain now, with, yes. like, no scruples or morals. Yeah. And you want to know what their whole reasoning was for that? Oh, well, he started a team full of children and set them out to fight. Well, you know what? You know how many other teams had kids in them and were going out to fight during the 60s? I mean, there was Superboy. Uh, Batman should have been arrested and uh, hit by child uh, um, child services. services. Yeah. yeah, because he had, you know, a 12-year-old as his sidekick. <laughs> there was the Legion of Superheroes, which were teenagers. Yeah. Johnny Storm was a teenager. Yeah, so don't, started. why, you know, I know people have gone after Reed Richards, but that's just the way he's been written. So, you know, that's okay. But why is it just Charles Xavier is the only one getting zapped? I I really and I mean. So I guess the the parents of the power pack are terrible people too because they let their kids go out there and save the world. Yeah, it's it just I mean it's it's the hypocrisy of writing one character to be villainous because you don't like this, but this character is still cool. Now Reed Richards has been written as a villain at this point because mm -hmm. um, he's done some pretty terrible shit. Uh, and the Fantastic Four are related to the X-Men because of Days of Future Past, so I'm not going too far off track. Yeah. But Xavier being written as Hitler is going too far. Now, Xavier has Xavier is an arrogant asshole. Do not get me wrong. Right. But, I mean, if you're going to get on Xavier's ass, then maybe also look at Magneto because he had teenagers in his groups, too. Yep. And why not Mr. Sinister? They were teenagers in that group as well. Emma Frost too. Yeah, Emma. Fr yeah, Emma Frost. Emma well, Frost. Who mother fucking, fucking Hellions. Hate. Yeah, she actually was teaching the Hellions to kill people. Yeah. Whereas um, Xavier and later Magneto were saying, "No, don't do that. Don't kill people. We do not want to kill humans. We have to learn to work together." Emma Frost was saying, "Yeah, uh, kill humans, and while you're at it, kill the the New Mutants and the X Men too." Yeah, and when the X-Men and the New Mutants would defeat the Hellions, eventually, always, they didn't, like, capture them and force them. They just said, hey, here's a, there's a better way. And they said, hey, no, we want to go back and we want to change it the way, you know, from what it, the way it is. They didn't, you know, the X-Men weren't totalitarian, totalitarian dickheads. No, they were people suffering and on the run. Yeah. And Kat, I love that you're saying he's more like Wormtongue. <laughs> Xavier's like warm tongue. 
Grimma Worm Tongue. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think a lot of people remember Xavier from the X-Men cartoon, the 92 cartoon, where he wasn't as much of an asshole. Yeah, they did tone and, it down. Yeah, and those X-Men were adults at that point, with the only one being Jubilee. And even yeah. then, there were episodes where were like, no, Jubilee, you cannot come. You are not trained for this. You are a child. And then she throws a temper tantrum saying, everybody treats me like a kid. Well, yeah, you're 13. Everybody like else did. on that team is between 18 and 150. <laughs> I mean, Logan. <laughs> yeah, I got you. <laughs> you know, I mean, um, yeah. like Gambit would be in his mid to late 20s, along with Scott and Jean. Hank was probably in his 30s. Rogue would probably be in her early 20s. Storm would probably be in her mid 20s to early 30s. Yeah, I think you know, in the mid '90s, well, uh, they just as like a fun little milestone, not in the, the cartoon, but in the comics, they had uh, B celebrate his 30th birthday and him feeling like he was getting old because, as far as he knew, he was the second oldest X Men. You know, nobody knew how old Wolverine was back then. I actually have that issue where they talk about the fact he asks Charles to retire. He's like, look, uh, you know, I know the legacy virus shit is going on, but once that's over, I don't want to be on the X-Men anymore. And Xavier was wanted to talk to him about it and be like, okay, yeah, we'll talk about this. And it sounded like Xavier was going to be okay with it. But then Storm interrupted with something that had to do with X-Force and Sabretooth, and it was really weird. Mm. Okay, so <laughs> welcome back. I'm going to make another comment about the people writing these comics. Okay, get them. Be it Hickman, Morrison, Bendis, Coates, take your pick. When you know, yeah, okay, Stanley was kind of full of shit when he was claiming that the X Men were a metaphor for the civil rights movement. Mm -hmm. I thought they were a ripoff of Doom Patrol. They were. Yeah, but. In time, the message under Claremont was basically, yeah, okay, the freaks among us, those who are radically different, we can live together. The idea was essentially the American melting pot. You know, that They were saying, yes, even radically different beings that are in uh, right with different genetics can live side by side in peace. Mm -hmm. What's the message of uh, Bendis, Morrison, uh, Hickman, Coates, kill them before they right. kill you. Yeah, the racial divisiveness that's, you know, the the carrying carrying call, you know, the carrying card of all progressives right now. Yeah, basically the message is kill them before they kill you. Stay in your little box. Don't don't try and find out anybody else's opinion. Just, you know, stay with your kind. Defend your kind. No, that's not even defend. They're genocidal. Yeah. Well, they, they've turned it around and made it where the X-Men, it's no longer about, hey, don't look at my mutant power. Look at who I am and to, no, my mutant power is everything. Like there was uh, one issue that was Bendis was writing and they were, people were talking about like, it shouldn't be just about our mutant powers. And Kitty turns around and says, I'm a mutant and I'm a Jew. That is who I am. Um. Well, it sounds about as uh, left wing as you can get right there. It yeah. works against Dracula. I mean, you oh, know, uh, whenever uh, a leftist talks, they always begin the sentence with as a, as a, as a. Well, I'm going to say, I, I mean, Bendis really must be a hollow person on the inside for the way that he's written all the superheroes. They well, are he defined is Jewish. You know, so he maybe he was speaking through Kitty. Maybe that was his opinion when he yeah. wrote that. Why would he make such a point of that? It was it was typical. I don't know the whole page and I can't remember, but it was a typical Bendis book where the dialogue bubbles take over more than the art. Yeah. Because the guy loves to pontificate in his comic books. Write a fucking book. Don't write comic books. Oh, that's right. You can't write anything but dialogue. Oh, I hate that guy. He's such a terrible writer. Mm. Um, yeah, they also had a Sam Guthrie proudly pronounce he was white to a black bouncer. Eh? 
What's well, that because he's from Kentucky. Him? He's from the South. He must be Ku Klux, right? Uh, all his best friends are brown or some shade of not um, white. Yeah. His best friend in the world actually is brown. It's, actually, it's his best friend is Afro-Brazilian. Uh, yeah. You know, that's someone who doesn't know fuck all about the South. Because I'll tell you something about the South. And I'll tell you something about Southerners. Yeah. They wouldn't say, I'm white. They would never say that. You know what they'd say? I'm from Texas. My family. They say I'm proud. Alabama. They would be proud of their state. Yeah. My family's from Texas and Oklahoma. My family's See? from the South. Yeah. And those states I, all have fucking rivalries over whose state is better. It wouldn't be race. I visited Texas. Flor I spent a lot of time in Texas, Florida, and Ohio. And Ohio is the racist, most racist state I've I visited. Oh, you mean? Uh, well, what part of Ohio did you go to? <laughs> Youngstown. Okay. Tell you the truth, the most racist place I ever went to was Atlanta, uh, Atlanta but that's for time for a story for another time. Oh, uh, Draco, Nightmare, yeah, Sam Guthrie was in space with his wife, who was part of the MHGR Imperial Guard during Krakoa. I think this was before Krakoa, he got like married? during the Bendis era. So he got married. Yeah, all of a sudden Guthrie's married. Well, before that, him and uh, Roberto had quietly yeah. left the X Men and were part of the Avengers. Yeah, they were like part time Avengers or something stupid. And did you catch Roberto bought AIM? Yeah, the terrorist I, organization. Not only he did he buy AIM, AIM. but all AIM. of a sudden. He had a, a silver streak through his hair to make him look more villainous, too. Or, I'm sorry, distinguished. Oh, I, I'd like to get off now, please. Can you stop the ride, please? Well, thank you, everyone, for joining us. I, again, I remind <laughs> you to buy my book. <laughs> Boobs of Steel, it's the best pop culture book you'll ever read. It's about the... <laughs> <laughs> Link in the description. Okay, we're not really done, are we? No, 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 no. no. Um, I mean, if you want to go, there was, what else would I want? Well, I actually did go off on a lot of stuff. I mean, oh, yeah. we can go on the positive stuff now. Um, but none I of that's mean, recent. I mean, I suppose there is. The fact that, that they may eventually just go out of business, the sales are so bad. Mm -hmm. that, that's positive. Well, one positive thing, too, is all the Cyclops fans are so tired of him being written as a horrible human being there is an active movement to make him good again and i mean Kronk is right when we've talked about this before the reason i don't like Cy cyclops really isn't because he's a shitty father he is the stick up the ass person that you hang out with like he ruins all the fun like shut up dude i want i want to go put this m80 in the trash can what do you mean i can't put it in the trash can because the cops will come who cares Psych is is that guy. It's like no, you can't. I, do I agree, a hundred, hundred and ten percent. It's between, just like bro. yeah. <laughs> between him and Storm, they equal Captain America because he's the upstanding rules person, and she's the compassionate, accepting everybody, but not accepting evil. Yeah, you know. And so, yeah, I mean, you know, honestly, you go back when we were talking about Inferno, I honestly thought, in my opinion, that was one of Cyclops's best moments. That is where he shone, shone as a character. Yeah. Because he was a dad and he, even though he didn't love Madeline Pryor anymore, he apologized profusely and would do anything to take it back. He really want, he truly did not want to kill her. He oh. was freaking out. And I mean, that whole, his drive, I'm sorry. I truly think he would have sacrificed Jean Grey in the end if it came between her and Christopher. He would have. Maybe, yeah. I just remember him tanking a full power blast from Madeline. Now, she might have pulled back at the last second or something. Then that might be the only reason he survived. But, I mean, like, to save Christopher, I was like... I kind of, I guess that's kind of when I started liking him. <laughs> I didn't use. I that. honestly, if I was in his position and that was my kid, I would take the blast. I don't care. My kid lives, even if I die. It is yeah. all about my child. Yes, but that made oh. it like 
real, you know? I mean, like, because anybody could say, you know, the part where he blasts Sinister and he finishes Sinister off. Oh, yeah, anybody would do that. But, like, he risked, like, telekinetic Armageddon for his baby boy. Yeah. He, he wasn't was, even sure that he would, you know, his son would survive it, but he did it anyway, which is yeah, totally I, real. He was, all in all, a good dad. Um, I mean, you know, find, finding out that he bailed and didn't tell Madeline where he was going first. He should have done that. He really should have just been like, hey, Gene's back. They need me. I'm not going to stay. Yeah. But they need me real quick. And also what it would have helped, too, is, hey, Madeline, pack up Nathan Christopher. Let's go. The three of us as a family. Yeah. And that would that would have actually brought assurance to Madeline. But Scott being Scott did not say anything first. Oh, Dominic, I always liked Wolvesbang and Richter together. It was the the sweet little Catholic girl with the Mexican punk rocker, and they balanced out each other very well. And also, Until on a they side note, Richter I am... Gay. I, of course, yeah. everybody's gay. Everybody's gay. Yeah, all of a sudden, they decided Richter and Shatterstar should be a gay couple. Yeah. That I was blown... Oh, God, they oh. hooked him up with a lame character? Mm-hmm. Yeah. They just hate him. They probably were trying to drag drag uh, Shatterstar up more. Yeah, they were trying to do something with Shatterstar because only people who really liked Shatterstar were the same people who liked 90s Wolverine. They thought he was so cool. It was the whole Cable Bishop Shatterstar Wolverine mm -hmm. uh, thing the that, bad. like, they were pushing those characters. The bad guy, the anti-hero, I mean, you know, the bad boy, the anti-hero of the team. Um. And also, I saw, I cannot believe that Macross got licensed to Disney. It, it, Macross, we loved you. We truly oh, loved you. Oh, you know run. they're going to go back and uh, re-record all the voice lines to change everything. Oh, yeah. Just like uh, Funimation. Funimation. Funimation did, yeah. Well, yeah. Hopefully, uh, hopefully they'll uh, go out of business before that happens. Cross your fingers. <laughs> I wouldn't mind seeing Disney just melt into the ground. I think di this is Disney trying to do a Hail Mary because they've realized they have destroyed everything. And right now, anime is the big thing. So they're going to try and get Macross. They got Macross and they're hoping to get people to watch because uh, Netflix pulled a coup and got all of Gundam. And I said, <laughs> I mean, all of Gundam. Wow. Yeah. So, it, you know, we still have Netflix. So Steve and I are super happy. There's a lot of Gundam that we're going to be watching. But, um, yeah, the Cyclops, what I didn't like is when Morrison got a hold of Cyclops. That's when I was like, I yeah. hate this character so much. Yeah, and it's because shit. Morrison put him, he became Cyclops. Well, I hated everything Morrison anyway, so. I mean, yeah. yeah. Well, look, I'm going to say it every time you bring him up, okay? The guy is just a half-assed wannabe Alan, <laughs> Alan Moore. Apparently he hates Alan Moore. Is yeah, uh -huh. or Ellen Moore? Yeah. <laughs> Dollar Tree Ellen Moore. Yeah, he is. He's a Dollar Tree Ellen Moore. <laughs> I, so, I oh, even sorry, wrote some kind of out. hokey book uh, with bullshit mysticism in it. Yeah. Um, I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, sorry. No, it's okay. It wasn't anything. Uh... When oh. Cyclops and Magneto had it out, and like for some reason they were Cyclops was capable of kind of fighting Magneto by himself, and Magneto said, "I will not be your executioner if you want people killed. You do it yourself or whatever." I was like, "No, I gotta go." You know what kind of jackass decides to write superheroes when he says actively, "I want to destroy the hero's journey." <sighs> Oh, wait, hold on. William, that's where the Kitty Pride thing came from. Uh, click on William or William Silva's thing about uh, why Bendis wrote, I'm a mutant, I'm also a Jew. Mm. It was a response to Rick Remender's Uncanny Avengers un Unity run, where Havoc said on live TV he wants to be seen as Alec, not as a mutant, and it caused real life backlash. The fact that Bendis got offended over that says so much. They're fake fucking characters, and you're pissed about that. You have so, no penis. There is friends. So, so does that mean that uh, Bendis would rather be known as a Jew than 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 Bendis? I mean, if 
If Alec doesn't want to be in it and he wants to be called Alec, yeah, it seems logical. So many circuits are burning right now. I'm sure, like, the smell of ozone in my apartment is yeah. thick. I mean, how can you not take that as the guy's a racist piece of shit? Seriously. Well, because to him, the only thing that matters about anyone is only skin deep. Re, re, Williams. That's all I have to say. Yeah. So what you're saying, Bendis, is your tribe is the only thing that matters. You're not a human being. Good to know. I mean, look at how many characters he's created for his daughter because he says there's no black superheroes or no powerful black superheroes. We've talked about this before. Well, that just shows I give you ass. exhibit A. Storm. <laughs> she can control the weather of the entire fucking planet. How is she not? A po- apparently that doesn't mean jack shit. She you know, as editor, he could have brought Monica Rambeau back. It, it... Oh, oh, was yeah. even more powerful than Storm. Yeah. Power isn't the important parts. Are they good characters? And he's written some very powerful characters, and they all suck shit. I know, but Ma- Monica Rambeau is like the one, like actually super powerful character that was always super interesting. Like I didn't want to like her when she first came into the Avengers, and I when I found out she was going to become the leader of the Avengers, I was like, okay, yeah, this is progressive. This is neat. This is not for a cause. No, they made it make fucking sense. They made her remember? a good leader. Oh. Sorry. Do you remember ahead. before Carol Danvers took off to join the Star Jammers? Yeah. She actually came back and she met Monica Rambeau for the first time and she was pissed because Carol was very oh, yeah. good friends with Marvel and she was yeah. so mad that the Avengers let Monica Rambeau call herself Captain Marvel. And Monica was a captain of, I think, the New Orleans police. Yeah. So she was a captain, just like Marvell was a captain in the Cree army. And Carol lost her shit on her. And this is, Carol didn't have the emotions attached to the memories anymore because of Rogue. Yeah. But it still upset her because Marvell was such an important part of her life. And uh, yeah, I remember she storms off and Monica's kind of like, what did I do, guys? Like, I've never met this woman. I don't know what the hell is going on. And she's pissed at me. Well, I think uh, Star Fox made her feel better because he was friends with Marvel too, and he said that she would be a worthy successor to him. She actually was. At yeah. least I thought so. She I was thought great. she was great. And honestly, I didn't like the Avengers back then, and I, I still liked her. Whoa, wait, 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 wait. Well, Bendis' reason was Storm wasn't created by black people? Well, I hate to break it to Bendis, but none of his characters were created by black people either. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> They were all created by Jews. Exactly. I'm not, I'm not, yeah, I'm not lying. Jewish men. Okay. I'm Jewish gonna... men created these well, awesome black superheroes. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Kirby made a Black Panther. Wasn't yeah. it Kirby? I thought it was Kirby. Yeah, it was Kirby. Kirby made that yeah. character up. Kirby also. Made up uh, no, it was, it was uh, Dave Cockrum created uh, the majority of the second wave of X-Men. The international team. And then they handed it to Claremont. Yeah. Claremont and Byrne. Yep. Love Byrne. I don't care what you say about him. I love Byrne. If you read uh, X-Men The Hidden Years, there's about, I want to say, like eight to ten issues or something. Fucking He's amazing. a petty asshole, but he's a good writer. Exactly. He's a very good, good yeah, he is a petty asshole. What he but did, he is a very good writer. Yeah. What he, he did to Big Barda to get back at uh, Jack Kirby was some bullshit. Yeah, that, that that's was. awful because I don't know about that. I don't, so, yeah, I don't know what um, Jack Kirby was still lobbying for comic book artists and writers to have the rights to the characters they create and then license them out to said companies. And John <laughs> Byrne said, No, I'm a company man. And Jack Kirby disagreed with him. So, uh, Mr. Miracle and Big Barda are based on Jack Kirby and his wife, Roz. Mm-hmm. So when uh, Byrne had Superman is when he had Slee show up, kidnap Big Barda and have her film sex acts and porn with Superman. To oh, say fuck you that to Jack was Kirby. that? Yep. Oh, that was Didn't they try to retcon that as uh, lookalikes and it wasn't real? I think they did later on because it was so devastating. People were angry when that issue came out. I wasn't reading comic or no, I wasn't reading Superman when that came out. So I didn't know about it till years later. 
people right. were livid. They were like, you do not touch. They, he Burn literally had Apocalypse, uh, I'm sorry, Dark Seed waiting in um, Mr. Miracle and Big Barda's living room with a snifter of brandy, happily watching these porn tapes while showing them to Scott Free. Dark Side would never do that. Right. Like, Why Dark would he Side bother? is the embodiment of Satan on Dark the si cosmic level. <laughs> Dark Side would have kidnapped Scott, taken him back to Apocalypse and shown him that, but it's not doing it in your li living room with Brandy or whatever. Yeah. That sounds I mean, more along the lines of something Granny Goodness would do. Yeah, exactly. That's her lineup. That's not. Uh, yeah. Sacred Geek, Len, I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing his name correctly, but Len Wein also was very big. It was him and Cockerham that pretty much created the uh, international team of X-Men. That was them. Yeah, the UN so, X-Men. Yeah, and I mean, yeah. they did but, it right. I love the fact that Sunfire shows up for one mission and is like, fuck you, I'm superior to you. I'm going back to Japan. <laughs> <laughs> Like, what a douche. Yeah. He, but he was always a douche, so it was consistent, you know? Oh, yeah. Well, he was a Japanese, he was a samurai. He was the embodiment of a modern-day samurai. So, of course, he was going to think the X-Men were beneath him. I guess back in the pre-Giant Size X-Men days, his first encounter with the X-Men, he fought them for at least a little bit, too, like Banshee did? Yeah. So I didn't actually read that one. But well, I, about it. I will repeat this because I've said it plenty of times. I know I'll never get a chance to create my own superhero universe. So fuck it, whatever. But if I could have it to do, I wouldn't have characters like Sunfire exist because usually in the DCU and MCU, when you had a character who was from another country, they were usually done in the tradition of American superheroes. And I would much prefer that, like, the superheroes in Japan be like the superheroes Japan have, like Sailor Moon and Ultraman, uh, all the, uh, you know, Sendai, Sentai stuff, like that. You know, oh, my God, that would be amazing. Mass Rider. Yeah, have, have heroes in their tradition. And uh, do that, like, in Mexico, they would all be uh, luchadors, for instance. I will Shit say like that. that DC did something really funny that I actually thought worked uh, when they were trying to get that sweet Chinese money. They made their own Chinese JLA. That was and stupid. No, but they they were they actually were like part of the uh, what is it not not the CC is it CCP? Yeah, yeah. yeah. They they towed the line. They were so communist. It was great. They were not like Western superheroes at all. <laughs> Good times. <laughs> oh, fuck them. Seriously, I'm just, fuck corporate. Fuck the assholes. Yeah. Um, the the accountants, the lawyers, and the not yeah the all the asshole uh, paper pushers have no imagination that made this happen. Fuck all of them. No, and they right. just keep rehiring the same people. You know, it's it's very incestuous at this point, and that's maybe why everything is, you know, the equivalent of a severely malformed infant when yeah. it comes to their comic books. Uh, yeah, they just keep hot because they, they're in such a small echo chamber at this point that they can't think of anything else. And they keep bringing in other people, but these other people that are supposedly the fresh injection just have the same... Uh, Oh, they're worse. Yeah, ideas. I mean, it's uh, it's just shit. I mean, we, when you uh, you say that Joss Whedon's run on X Men is better than what's coming out right now, and I mean, uh, I've gone back and reread that run, and I was like, okay, so it's just Buffy two point oh. Why didn't you just call it the a, a Kitty Pride? It should have just been called Kitty Pride or Shadow Cat. I will say though, he did write Emma Frost correctly. Because Greg, he grew up when Emma Frost was, you know, a villain. So she was still a bitch that everybody hated except for Cyclops. And Greg Pack is exactly what you were talking about. He's got a good talking. imagination. He's a kind of a good writer, but he does not understand the Incredible Hulk for shit. And so that's why it had to be uh, 
world, uh, not World War Hulk, but the uh, other one, the one before it, that was literally just um, Princess of Mars Hulk. <laughs> oh, you mean when uh, he was on a uh, Planet Star? Hulk? Planet Hulk, yeah. I, I'm not going to lie, I kind of like the Planet Hulk storyline, and I enjoyed World War Hulk. I loved it when they had Hulk and Wolverine fight again. Yeah. And just showing that the Hulk will always win, where he beat Wolverine so bad that his brain was damaged. It took him forever to heal. Yeah. Yeah, he literally... No, I, I'm not saying Wolverine it wasn't bad, but he... he, he it, 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 I'm not saying it wasn't good. I'm sorry. I did enjoy both of those, but when I found out that it was basically the same plot as uh, John Carter... For Planet Hulk, and then kind of took the shine off World War Hulk for me. And then when he ends up not killing anyone at all, I was like, "What? Where are you just showing the world yet that they hurt your fifis? They killed your wife and your son. Well, not his son, but you know what I mean. They yeah. killed your wife, and your revenge is to make them all know that they hurt your fifis. Okay. Yeah, they 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 should have had him kill everybody. Um, the only one that he let live and let live was Xavier because Xavier was not alive when the Illuminati made that decision because that was one yeah. reason he had confronted the X-Men. Yeah. He asked that, Xavier point blank, would you fight. Yeah. But he asked Xavier point blank, if you were alive, would you have voted me to be kicked off the planet? And Xavier's like, yep. He's like, yes. well, at least you were honest, so you get to live. Bye. <laughs> Yeah, he bent Colossus's arms backwards towards his face. He oh, was raffle right. stomping everybody, including stupid White Queen. He 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 uh he was going toe to toe with the Juggernaut so hard that they fell through the floor into the X pool. It was great. Oh yeah, no, it proved that that the Hulk could take out the X Men no problem. Exactly. Yeah. And through the whole thing, instead of really fighting too much, Beast is trying to talk him down. Even though they don't have good history, he still rather would try and talk the Hulk down than join in the uh, Donnybrook, as Hank might say. Yeah, well, that's because that was proper Beast back then. Exactly. Exactly. I just loved it. That was, that was good. That was good stories. I just love that Wolverine's head was paced and his body's twitching. They're like, Jesus Oh, yeah, and Hulk Christ! was... <laughs> Hulk was holding him up by his wrist so he couldn't even, like, you know, get a lucky swing in or anything like that. I loved yeah. it. That's why uh, the ending of Old Man Logan is so... Dumb? I don't know. It's... it's uh, The Hulk was so addled from the gamma radiation by that point, he couldn't properly fight Logan, so Logan won. Uh, let's 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 go into detail here. Logan won with bone claws when adamantium doesn't cl cut the Hulk. Yeah. <laughs> well, not the Green Hulk. Well, that was also Mark Millar. Or is it Mil Mark Millar or Miller. Miller. He's got this. He's another yeah. who uh, hates American superheroes, and he's got a sick obsession with American supervillains. Like he wrote Wanted, and you know that was where the <laughs> villains had secretly won. That was won. so fucking dumb. <laughs> A wanted. Yeah, it was so Are you dumb. About the it was comic wonderful. Book or the movie, because they were both dumb. Uh, yeah, it was. If Eminem was a superhero and Tommy Lee Jones was his dad, who or no, I'm uh, sorry, Eminem was a supervillain and his dad was Tommy Lee Jones, and he was screwing Halle Berry. Yeah, I didn't that, miss anything. Did not. Miss yeah, anything that was right. wanted. Yeah. And then he literally took. The storyline to Wanted and put it as Old Man Logan. It's the same friggin' storyline. The The villains won. They killed all the heroes. Or if they didn't kill them, they psychologically broke them like they did to Logan. Yeah. And had taken over the United States. Yeah. I but... really, really dislike the fact that the Hulk and She-Hulk were having kids and were hillbillies. Yeah. Well, you know what? It wasn't that they were having kids. He had taken Jennifer Walters, tied her up, and raped her to have kids because she was the only one that could, quote, take the pace. And I, I don't know that they would have been so inbred because they weren't really that closely related in the first place. They're just cousins. They're like cousins from different, you know, different sides of the family. Yeah, but later on he was screwing his own daughters and granddaughters. That's, that was so inbred. Up. That's so gross. Seriously, yeah. they're just fucked up people. 
And the thing they're is, fucked up also, people, and their their stories show how fucked up and terrible they are. The thing also about the Maestro is he's either the second or third most powerful version of the Hulk. Wolverine's bone claws aren't going to scratch his eyeball, let alone cut his head off. Yep. Yeah, it was a very strange story. I didn't know where it w- the ending surprised me and not in a good way. Let's put it to you that when they revealed that the Hulk was the bad guy the whole time and the Hulk happily went and killed Logan's wife and children so he could get in a fight because he was bored. Oh, my gosh. Talk about not and, understanding the character. Well, yeah, I mean, having having Bruce Banner imprison his cousin because she was the only one that could handle his fucking and so he rapes her and impregnates her over and over again so they have hulk children and then his daughters can also take it so then he starts breeding with them excuse me marvel have we forgotten titania she's not related yeah valkyrie not related I'm not saying I want to see rape stories, but I mean, like, it's not logical. Hey, uh, Marvel, remember when uh, you wrote good stories and it didn't have to have uh, incest rape in it? <laughs> yeah. Remember Gosh, when... yeah, I wonder what's this, uh, what's it say about them? What's wrong with Mark, huh? Well, it, you know, honestly, that kind of writing reminded me of Garth Enos. It was fun the first time around when he was doing his, you know, edgy stuff. But then the same friggin' story, like the boys, I read uh, the boys and I do not know why I powered through that, but I was gagging towards, there was so much stuff that made me gag. And I was like, I can't eat tonight. <laughs> he I didn't bother. Nasty. That's the thing. He had one joke. That was it. Oh, oh, organized it? religion's bad. That's his. That's Garth Ennis's big thing. He hates oh. anything organized religion. Right. Uh, yeah. No, the authority is absolute dog shit. Iron Cast Knight. You're right. I never read the authority. I, I dodged a bullet. Yeah, it's. It was like DC Avengers if they were run kind of like by the government because they're the replacement for Stormwatch. Uh, and they had them actually defeat, or no, they were, they were like the JLA. They weren't the Avengers. I'm sorry. They defeated a evil version of the Avengers just to prove how badass they were. Oh, is that the issue which involves the rape of Apollo by the the evil version of the Avengers, Captain America? Because Garth Ennis bragged about that because he said he hated Captain America. I actually don't remember, but Apollo was painted to be like Superman, so I don't know how that would have worked out. Yeah, I just remember Garth Enos is like, yeah, I, I can't stand Captain America. So I decided to make a, a, a villain of him, even though it's not Captain America. And I had him rape Apollo and then have Midnight or find him after he'd been raped. It's like, so what clever. the hell is wrong with you? So clever. It's so, so clever. Because, you know, male on male rape is less edgy than male on female rape. No, it's the same fucking thing. And it's gross. And it's not needed in comics. Leave it and, out. And after they finally beat the evil Avengers or whatever, Midnight and Apollo got together anyway. So, you know. Yeah. Nothing brings two guys together like uh, one of them getting raped, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. No, they were... Ar- I- Okay, then maybe that's a different storyline. Yeah, if they weren't already a couple, they were after. I know that. Okay, because the one that Enos wrote, Midnighter goes on a rampage and goes and kills all these guys after what they did to Apollo. Well, I would say the evidence that um, Ennis has one gag is he was given one of the best characters ever and blew it. And that was Judge Dredd. In fact it got to the point where he actually decided to remove himself from the book and even admitted, look, I, I can't do this. This suck. Uh, my, my writing sucks. And I thought that was kind of interesting that, that he flat out was like, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, my run was bad. He must have learned a lesson because I've heard across the board that his Punisher run is probably the best Punisher run ever. Because the pun- this is when Marvel had Marvel Max. So it was like the Marvel version of Vertigo. So you could do kind oh. of the more violent stuff gritty. that the Punisher deals with. Adult gritty. 
Henry. Yeah. Well, I I've read some of his uh, uh, Punisher run. I got to say, I was impressed. I was <laughs> very surprised. So maybe he learned something. What wherever he fucked up on Judge Dredd, he was able to do better on Punisher. But that's really the only good thing I've ever seen him do. You know, I I tried to read Preacher, and yes, I'm a Christian, so I'm biased. But that was an insulting book. I didn't even bother with Crossed. I, I didn't even read it. I had somebody else read it and then tell me about it, and I was bored off my fucking rocker the whole time. <laughs> I was like, people think this is awesome. This is like a complete like. Did somebody? This was wrote by somebody not, who not only hates like religion, but doesn't understand it at all. Like, doesn't try to. No, uh, it like, was unreal. God has to be on a throne to be God. What? That would be much of a god, then, would it? He's got to well, stay sitting down. <laughs> I mean, finding out that Jesus was lying about being like a prophet, and he needed to make sure his lineage stayed, so he tricked. Or he had an affair with Mary Magdalene, and she passed off her kid to her husband, saying it was actually his kid. And they just inbred those kids so they could keep their powers. So by the time they're in the 20th century, they're all retarded. Think of that. And I that don't was mean actually, that yeah. like, ha-ha, retarded. I mean, like, no, they <laughs> were <laughs> severely disfigured and disabled. <laughs> uh, that was actually, uh, he didn't make any of that up, actually. That was, all, that was an old conspiracy theory. Clever. It's so clever, though. Uh, it's uh, it kind of the same conspiracy that a lot of the uh, Da Vinci Code came from. Yeah, Da Vinci Code. That was that was an awesome one. I figured it out before I got to page 100. That was a thriller. <laughs> knew exactly who was involved, who was guilty, da-da-da. Didn't cut to the end, read the whole damn thing. Yep, I was right. No, that's Not going to ruin a, it for anybody. <laughs> that's been a debunked conspiracy for a while. There's never, yeah. ever... She was a follower of his, but much later. Yeah. And uh, the only reason is because she's brought up a couple of times as one of his followers. And she was also there to um, anoint his body when uh, it was put into the tomb. But for some reason, people took from that like, oh, I'm going to ship the two of them. They were obviously yeah. together. Shit no. talkers going to shit talk. That's fine. Oh, Whatever. Wolf, I would rather read Johnny the Homicidal Maniac, too. And Squee, Squee is my favorite. Well, you know, you know, as the uh, as the uh, atheist of the group, I don't really care one way or the other if uh, Christ had a relationship or even a kid with Mary Magdalene, because frankly, we don't know, and just wallowing in it to be edgy is fucking lame. That's Tell a good story. I'm... Yeah. Yeah. No, he said I mean, he wrote could... preacher to piss off Christians. I mean, if, if he had written that, it, it, you know, you could tell that story. You know, okay, what if Christ did have a kid? That could be a good story. You'd have a lot of hurdles to get over, and you'd have to make sure the religious side of your audience didn't murder you, but <laughs> it could be an excellent story. No, I agree with that. It could be an excellent story, but the way Innes did it. No, it was just Innes was just being finger. edgy. Yeah. Um. God, it's, I'm sorry. My brain is going a thousand miles per hour right now. It's okay. I'm, just, we I'm do getting so pissed. <laughs> I just keep getting more mad. Uh, but yeah, um, I can't think of anything else right now. I will tell you. I'll, I'll, we, my turn. Do it. Right. As the, uh, as the uh, I guess, professional writer of the group. Most definitely. Uh, with a bunch of books under my belt. I'll just say... Everything we've discussed here doesn't have to be this way. Everything we've discussed and complained about didn't have to suck. Yes. The fact of the matter is all of this stuff turned into trash because they put their politics and their personal issues and their petty hatred for other people first over storytelling. Good storytelling transcends all barriers. Good storytelling, be it liberal, leftist, or conservative, or libertarian, all of us can look at Star Wars New Hope and see something we relate to. Values we all understand. Values transcend politics. Morals, right and wrong, transcend politics. 
So does the hero's journey. And, you know, getting someone like Grant Morrison, who outright said he's out to destroy the hero's journey, why would you put him on a, a book about heroes? Sounds like, oh, great, let's get a blind guy to drive the bus next. Yes, exactly. <laughs> let's have a, a not, Nazi doctor be in, in charge of the uh, children's ward at the uh, hospital. In, in Israel. <laughs> in Israel, yeah, exactly. This is I think seriously. Thinking. bringing in the edgelord British writers is, is what the was the beginning of the end. Or what uh, started agreed. the fall. Absolutely agreed. All right. I, I'm Here's what I'm thinking, guys. Revolution 2, Electric Boogaloo, but we only kill the British comic book writers. We just go to war with only them. will commence again in yes. comics. Send the Brits packing. And the Canadians, too. I'll Boston Tea Party their asses right now. You know, I'm okay with the Brits writing their own stuff. I love yeah. Judge Dredd. I yeah. love Strontium Dog, okay? that That's some fun shit, but that's their stuff. You don't see us Yanks coming over to their comics and be like, yeah, we're going to totally rewrite Judge Dredd and Strontium Dog because we don't like this dark and satirical shit yeah. that you guys are doing. It needs to be fully superheroized. You know what? You know what? Dan Dare needs to be a fucking homo child rapist. I'm sorry. It's just that's what the story has always been lacking. <laughs> And you know, you know, let's let's, let's just, just really, you just got to step back. You know, the, the the Thunderbirds. Why aren't they all having sex with each other? Seriously, us Americans got to go over there and just kind of fix that shit. Mm -hmm. Johnny Alpha needs to become the protector of Earth and needs to have his Viking sidekick back with him, brought from the dead. He needs <laughs> to become the new protector of Earth. And uh, his hot on and off girlfriend needs to be his cat woman. Scarlet, what's her name? <laughs> oh, why is it? So what? he can get plan to get Durham married Red. and then she'll leave him at the altar? Yeah, Durham Red, thank you. Thank you. The the hot vampire girlfriend. She's hot actually. She's really hot. <laughs> what, 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 wait, wait, Sova. Garth Innes justified the potato famine, which was an engineered genocide to kill Irish people. What a piece of shit. Yeah. Wow. That's right. For those of you who don't know about history or that part of history, because we're not taught it, um, the famine, the potato famine that caused so many Irish to come to the United States was not a real famine. They had more than enough food, but the Brits were basically shipping all the food out to uh, England with the intent of starving the Irish until they were depopulated. It was a planned depopulation. Yep, they described the the Irish as not even human anyway. Sort of. Oh like yeah, the, they said that they were half animal. About Canadians. You can so, rape them, yeah. but they're not human. That's cool. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know. This. Yeah, yeah, the English did not treat the Irish well. I'm not saying that the Irish doing the troubles was the answer, because that they killed a lot of children, but the Irish have every reason to hate the british and i mean Look, you know reason. you know you, you try to genocide of people three times you're gonna get some fucking car bombs or at least you've tried to do it to irish people yeah, yeah. i'm not gonna I'm get not, some yeah i'm not excusing people. it either but like i could see it oh no i totally understand the justification you know? but one of the first things they did was kill yeah. um lord mount Botton, who was the uncle of prince philip and unfortunately, on the boat were like two or three of his grandchildren. And the guys that did it bragged about it, saying they killed the kids and they were so proud of themselves. I'm like, that's some bullshit. Now you're just like acting like the British did towards you. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so that's why I, I understand where it came from, but they shouldn't have done it that way. The fucking, just a full on fucking rebellion, dude. Arm up and go for it. Nobody likes to mess with a drunk Irishman. They're scary as hell. <laughs> They're that violent as fuck and they feel no pain. <laughs> that may happen. That, that, that very well may happen. And my family is from Ireland and Scotland. So, yeah. <laughs> try, try trying to genocide them since 800 AD, more like it. Yeah, that's true. Well, uh, well, as far as I recall, there were three. Deliber deliberate attempts, but yeah, they've been trying to genocide the Irish for 800 years. Well, and then before that, the Vikings were doing it or having exciting weekends, if you will. 
So I mean, before like before that, it was the Romans. Yeah. Except and you that's know what funny. the Irish the did back to them? The Irish fucked them <laughs> <laughs> and had their kids. <laughs> well, don't forget. I mean, they're pretty sure that King Arthur was based on a cent Roman centurion that was like, "Nah, fuck this. I'm going. I'm going native," and joined them. Uh, uh, yeah, actually, Camelot was probably up by uh, Carlisle uh, uh, on the border of Scotland. Yeah, and Excalibur was likely a gladius. They're huh. also, they said that they're pretty sure that uh, Merlin and Guinevere Merlin was most likely a tribal shaman. Yeah, or a druid, yeah. Yeah. That won't make sense. Think of the names yeah. Guinevere and Merlin. That's Welsh spelling. Exactly. There's another group suffering at the hands of the English, the Welsh. Oh, like Dominic, that. that's true. <laughs> I, we're talking about creators today. A lot of the creators in, that we had in the past were excellent people. Good to Chuck fans. Kept his balls. Oh, yeah. It's not about all of them. It's about oh, specifics. Dan Jurgens and Chuck Dixon were two of the best things to ever happen to DC Comics. Yep. I mean, truly. And that's when I started getting into Superman, was the death of Superman, which was Jurgens. Yeah. Because I, uh, I, I loved Superman because I loved Christopher Reeve. <laughs> I was sad that they killed him off. That was the first Superman comic I ever read and reread and reread, and I've probably read it into the hundreds since then. Yeah, that's actually where I discovered who uh, Booster Gold and Blue Beetle and Fire and Ice. Yeah, but Jurgens is Gardner. an American. We were talking about Brits we didn't like. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I was reading JLA before the death of Superman, so I already knew those characters. Like, not super well, but yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah, uh, it's it's today's writers, American writers. Uh, some of them are American. Some of them are British. But they just, they, they shouldn't be writing comics because they've just, instead, they've put themselves and their beliefs in it. Whereas a lot of these guys that wrote the old comics, yeah. they were liberal. They were very liberal. Claremont they was didn't... super liberal, but like he didn't rub your nose in it. Yeah, exactly. Guys, guys a, a, a 1980s liberal would be considered a Nazi today. Yeah, Surely. he's considered a, a very right-wing conservative today. Mm -hmm. That would explain his attempt with that Magneto story in X-Men Black. Ugh. Yeah. Apparently that was heavily that. Uh, edited. Edited or not, it is yeah. like, hey, I'm still on your side, guys. Yeah. Well, there's Holy stuff thing. I'd... I don't know. what One of the most pathetic things I've seen are... Um, liberals from let's say our heyday mm -hmm. utterly selling themselves out to say i'm still on your side i mean look at john stewart seriously oh yeah john look at stewart bill maher yeah. yeah yeah bill maher is another one so, come on yeah seth you guys are what seth Who? mcfarlane yeah you know it's so funny is George Carlin was a liberal, and he'd be mocking the fuck out of all these oh, yeah. people right now. Uh, he'd make he Mark would be cry. shredding them. Yeah, he, he would make him cry. Oh, well, listen, oh, you know, well, come on, Bill Maher's kind of become the uh, the uh, favorite lol cow lately. Bill Maher, he's become so pathetic. He is a pathetic cum stain. He is not even funny. I mean, he's, it's just him. He's constantly getting owned on his own show. It's just the guy's a joke. <laughs> yeah. Too much weed. Too I don't much think weed had too less, long. I don't even think it's weed. I think it's just he's too Hollywood. He lives in his bubble, doesn't know fuck all, and he's a shithead. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's a shithead for sure. You know who would be good to bring over from Europe to write comics? The French writers. And before everybody jumps down my throat, their sci-fi operas are phenomenal. What, the, I've uh, read French Barbarella. Barbarella was amazing. I've read Valerian and Lorelei. That is also very good. Um, and anything Mobius was drawing was fantastic. The ink call was amazing. And it was everybody got, uh, tried to tell me how to pronounce the dude's name when I was on Wolf's show last week. <laughs> Jorodowski. <laughs> the guy that Jodorowsky. made the greatest. Yeah. The guy that made the that greatest one. Dune movie never made. 
yeah. the Incal and the um, was it the is it the Meta Baron that that yeah, whole Mega, story Meta Barons. Were, yeah, were fantastic. They should have been getting those guys over here to write. They wouldn't be doing edgelord shit. Could you imagine the kick-ass space operas? How have these guys do Starlin's writing and draw it? Oh my god, the Guardians of the Galaxy or the Nova Corps. It would have been fantastic. But they went for the Brits. Uh, we and can thank, uh, I, I've kind of learned that, that the, the Brits are kind of... Uh, uh, they have a stiff upper lip, but I think they're really miserable on the inside. I really think so. The English? Yeah. Well, it really says a lot for, I'll say Europe as a whole, that it's constantly bitching about ugly Americans. <laughs> yes. When the moment yeah. they get here, all they do is shit on our culture. I will say I'm lucky in that the people I have met that have come over here, especially the guy, well, maybe it's because they work for 2000 AD. Every English person I've met that worked at 2000 AD talks about how much they love America. That they get uh, Dan so Abbott's good. Um, they, Dan they get Abbott is fucking amazing. Dan yeah. Abbott is the only one who's not an edgelord. Yeah. That man can write. That man made Aquaman awesome and popular that was considered a feat that could never happen and dan abnett was like hold my beer <laughs> and also his red sonia is amazing i'm still hunting down steve got me the first two issues of his red sonia arc where she's cursed with the armor of uh king arthur and we can't find the rest of it but it was so, the first two issues were so good. And I, I mean, as the Warhammer freak that I am, anytime yeah. a Dan Abnett book comes out, I save up money so I can get the the omnibus because it's like, yes. oh, it's not going to suck. It's Dan Abnett. It's going to be yeah. amazing. It is. That That's my favorite stuff of his. The only thing he's done that I didn't like was the, uh, the cosmic Marvel space stuff, like with the whole annihilation wave and all that. I felt like you really did not understand the characters perhaps as oh, well as he should have. I love the Annihilation Wave under him. I, I have to disagree. I looked at it as the reason the characters were so out of character is they were so ground down from a losing war. They were no longer, like when Peter Quill filled himself up with cybernetics because he was so afraid that he wouldn't be able to go toe to toe with Annihilus and his troops. Mm -hmm. Showed me that the man was, he went from being like a total womanizer, uh, happy-go-lucky party dude to like a very hardened lieutenant in Nova's army. Mm -hmm. And that, that was another thing. The, the kid who works at McDonald's is going to be the intergalactic general. Mm, talk about not understanding the character. Wait. You could tell uh, that story. You can tell that story. You just have to do it right. I, I, I will repeat that over and over again. I mean, come on! See, what is one of our our major myth myths? What are the, one of the major myths of of our our culture? The farm boy who yeah, Luke turns Skywalker. out yeah, you can tell the story, but you you got to do it right. You you can't just yeah. But here, here, and it wasn't his fault that they depowered Drax. They depowered Drax, and then when Drax finally catches up with a fully powered, very healthy Thanos. He punches through Thanos's chest when he couldn't do that when he was fully powered like a flying juggernaut. I was like, I no, I gotta go. I can't. <laughs> I can't buy this. I do not. It was this part of the Annihilation Wave? I don't remember that. Yeah, because Thanos joined up with Annihilus because supposedly he was afraid of being on the losing side or something stupid. Okay. And I then when Drax missed... caught up to him and Thanos was kind of backstabbing an eyeless behind the scenes, Drax caught up to him and didn't let him explain and somehow punched through Thanos's chest and armor all the way through that... his back. That's a little off. The only thing that I could see explaining that is yeah. because he made too much love to death, so he was rotting from the inside out. Well, see, that was the thing, but when... Death brought him back. She buffed him on beyond what he was when he was actually alive the first time. So he could shrug off Silver Surfer and Thanos, or I mean Silver Surfer and Thanos, Silver Surfer, Drax, and Thor hitting him at the same time. But a deep-powered Drax is gonna... 
punch to his chest. Okay, yeah, that's dropping the ball. Yeah, and I don't really blame him because, like, I th- I'm pretty sure that was like the whole annihilation thing was his first foray into, or yeah, into uh, Marvel. But that's just the only time I think he's dropped the ball, pretty much. Like, he could have done more research, and they could have, like, edited him a little bit. Like, ooh, damn. Wait, was, yeah, not, wait, not was he also writing Warhammer 40K, the Horus Heresy, at mm-hmm. this time? He might yeah. have been getting wires crossed. Maybe, yeah. Uh, and since the Horus, uh, the Horus Heresy didn't suck at all, I'm like, eh, well, I'll, I'll take a crappy Annihilation wave. That's fine. Just uh, honestly, now that you've... You said that honestly. I think he got his wires crossed and was writing Drax as a freaking space marine or a Primarch or something. Yeah. Because they also had Annihilus as this like great cosmic threat, and I'm just like, uh, the Fantastic Four beat Annihilus on a s- slow Friday night. Why are they this great? Co- I mean, why is he specifically this great cosmic threat? I know his army was big. Blah 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 blah. blah. Annihilus. Well, I- Star Starlin was also writing the Annihilation Wave at this time too. I think I only read the Starlin stuff. Oh, did he? I'm pretty sure he was in on it too. Starlin should have known better. Starlin should have complained. Let me see. Okay, or maybe Starlin came back after Abnet left. I think he might have come in because then they started doing different Infinity stories with Starlin after that, and none of them were that good. Very, very, very curious. Curious Annihilation Wave. But yeah, I mean, we're 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 talking about a guy who took a full Nova blast from uh, you know uh, uh, Johnny Storm and a pretty good blast from Havoc and just kind of like smiled. And Drax, depowered Drax is gonna puncture his chest. They were rewriting when they rewrote Drax and they stopped making him you know the giant green flying tard and they turned him into a much smaller, much less powerful guy who walked around with kitchen knives. And was stabbing people with kitchen knives, not adamantium kitchen knives, kitchen knives. Okay. People who so... shrugged off one to five, five howitzer shells. I like, you guys don't get it. Dan Abnett only wrote the Nova part. Simon oh, Furman okay. wrote the Ronin part. Keith Giffen wrote Prologue, oh. Silver Surfer, and Annihilation. Javier Grio Marox, I can't pronounce his name, wrote the like... Super Scroll part. And then Andy like Lanning. Simon Furman, too. Andy Lanning also wrote the Nova stuff, but I think he was writing for the new kid Nova that they replaced Richard Ryder. Who with. I don't like. Yeah, oh yeah, that's the little kid from McDonald's. Yeah, he's retarded. No, 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 no. Richard Ryder was a McDonald's employee before this whole annihilation thing started. I thought he was a fry cook. Oh, that's right. He was Kid Nova and he hated being called Kid Nova. Yeah, and even after the New Warriors days, he was still working at McDonald's. How the fuck do you go from being a galactic police officer that kicks so much ass to going back to McDonald's? What did you waste your paycheck on? Especially when you had Night Thrasher, who was like the third richest person in the Marvel Universe, paying your paycheck while you were at the New Warriors. Right? (laughs) Yeah. uh, blow. I don't know. I don't know. Well, he was banging uh, Namorita for a while. Lots of, lots of fish sticks for Namorita. I don't know. That's, that's a lot of fish sticks. <laughs> I don't, I don't. You bet she liked those fish sticks. He's giving her the tartar sauce. I have no idea. I have no idea. He just he invested in... What was that thing Alyssa Milano did back in the 1990s? Remember the she phone scam seen. thing? He must I just, have for her in the 1990s, I just remember Charmed. Yeah, she was doing those commercials for 1-800-something or other, and it was supposedly going to save you a lot of money. Instead of getting paid, she took stock in it herself, I think, and she lost money. She's not the brightest bulb in the box. Oh, no. She's not even in the box anymore. Oh, no. (laughs) Well, we should probably call this an evening. We are going on two hours. Oh, Oh, shit. But um, anyway... Thank you for joining us for a show that started out about X Men. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. But uh, thank you. This has been Generation X Men. I am your host, Jay Ishiro Penny, author and alien in a human suit. And if you care to uh, check out any of my work, links are in the description. Remember to like the video. 
Yeah, like Wait. the video, share it, and Royal, all that stuff. Or Santa won't come to your house next year. This is Wait, this does tie stuff. into X-Men, though, guys, Wait. because remember, oh. Kitty Pride was part of the Guardians of the Galaxy for a while. Oh, yeah, and her uh, Peter fixation. She'll date anybody named Peter. Named Peter, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Peter Wisdom, Peter Parker, Peter Rasputin. Peter Quill. Peter Quill. So, see, yeah. no, it fits in. If she fits in. Her Peter fish. Her fetish. <laughs> she likes Peter's Peter. She's all about it. <laughs> wow, this devolved really quick. Uh, this is one of the reasons I don't like doing these. I blame Marvel. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, again, do you guys want to say goodbye? Bye, everyone. Hey. Uh, next week, I guess we're going to be talking about Psylocke and Madripoor. Which I yes. actually cannot wait for. It's gonna be so much fun. Be All there right. or be square. Good night.